say that no matter what he does, no matter what he's done since he's been there, it has not changed his base. You know, the base of people that support yeah, him. Yeah. And if that's true, that's millions of crackpots. But you have to you remember, no, no, no. If you got to remember, same thing with the fear of it. Have we seen this before? Adolf Hitler. Don used the Adolf Hitler playbook. When he came to power, his speech was exactly the same as the Fuhrer's, except that the Fuhrer used German and Don copied his speech. Deutschland, it's my duty to defend Deutschland, the fatherland. It's my duty to secure America, to defend America. He feel on all the women, steal all everything he got, but he got, you can't, if you don't stand up for the flag, that nigga lies so bad. See, there will be, when this revolution is over, if he's still alive, we are gonna send him to an education camp. We're not gonna torture him, but I'm gonna instruct the people to whoop his behind with a switch. In fact, I may do it myself. A switch, just a little switch, I'm already. 
And I'm holding them like our mamas and daddies just told us that quack, quack is mine. With that vice and really had it holler. Oh, stop. Didn't I tell you? Stop all that lying. Why you send all them weapons over there to Asia? Wow, but I'm gonna whoop his behind. That's that's what we're gonna do. It's not me. Spare the rod and spoil the child. You know, that's the book says that. That's what the poison book says. Therefore, we're gonna whoop down. That's gonna be his punishment. We're gonna whoop him with a wool switch. No torture or the dungeon, lecture, none of that. Not just gonna whoop his behind with a switch. He got to take his pants off, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to take his pants off. And we're going to wet the little willis, you know, wet that boy up. With no, no ironing cords and stuff like that. Just a regular old switch. He's going to get wet on because he's already red. And instead of holding his hand, we might hold him by a little bit of hay. Got him right down, we hold him by that. And whoop him. You got to keep that attitude. Uh, thank everybody. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, wrap everything up right now. We we talked about, and I'll close with this: writing your own future. Okay, goal setting. Personally, all I'm doing right now is writing it down. So it'll take another three, four days. Then we're going. This won't be like last time. We're going to wait another few. No, we're not doing. We're going back. This week, and thus starts the official uh, grand revival. Closing, we don't care what they do. We expect that if they are fooled, they'll have to fool. Somebody called me yesterday. Talking and I was having a good time. First, I said I was laying down, planning on this, I'm going to rest. Then, then I snapped. You know, like it, you let it you be mad for about maximum 30 seconds, maximum. Then you flip off, good, stay on the phone. Then you get to rolling. You sound so, you sound crazy and shit. Silly. As a man called me, talked to me in Chinese, I tried to talk to him in Chinese back. I said, if a man called me from South America and speaking in Spanish, I can speak a little out and converse with him in Spanish. I said, if a fool called me, I'm going to talk to them in foolishness. I said, you a damn fool, and I'm going to talk to you like a damn fool. I said, that's the only thing I know for you. And you learned some sense? I said, then we talk to you like you got some sense. And then I said, that I was some this little joke stuff. I said, I'll talk to Because I, I gave myself a, another ID, not even a Muslim. But I named, my name was that, that yesterday was Dr. Clarence. Dr. Clarence is the head of the uh, Cyclist Colossal Society. The cerebellum. Um, my thought is that cerebellum is not a part of the brain, it is a cerebellum, the colossal cause of the other side of the And then, you know, you fix up the, I said, now, nah, you called me because you wanted help. I said, you had to want my help. That's the only reason you called me, and I know you have what we call psychological deference. You want my help, but you want to play like you don't help. That's part of your problem. So now, I'm going to help you. And I have credentials. I graduated from the Sorbonne. <laughs> and, uh, I did. Sorbonne. That's in France. And actually, it's Switzerland. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they speak French there at the Sorbonne. And I said, uh, and my colleague, Dr. Heckenberger, uh, he has three PhDs in psychological reverse distribution. I say, now you don't know what that is, but our analysis show that you have extreme psychological redistribution. I say, every time you try to think of something, 
redistribution, the front of your line will redistribute anything that makes sense to the back of your brain. And I said, now nah, here's what I'm going to do. I said, your problem is this. And I closed. And I was telling them, I told them this yesterday. I said, your problem is, is that you have, the average human being have 14 billion brain cells. And 14 billion. I say, yours have been reduced down to 200. You're down to 200 brain cells. I said, now, that means everything in your life is working on the autonomic nervous system. Which is true. I say you automatically eat because you're hungry, but you don't think about it because you ain't got no brain cells. I say your digestion is part, which it actually is, part of the autonomic nervous system, right? You digest your food and you go to the bathroom. I said, well, we're going to start with, they have physical enemas to get doo-doo out of your body. I said, we're going to stick one in your ear and we first got to give you a psycho enema <laughs> that let all the S-H-I-T out of your brain. I'm just having a good time. They call me. So I'm just going, I ain't going to say that I'm mad. And I'm just talking, I ain't listening to nothing. You won't listen to us. No, I, I, I'm not here to listen. I'm a teacher, I'm a professor. <laughs> I didn't call you to help me. You called me for help. Didn't you call me? You black mother, I said, that's all right. I said, you had a mother too, and you had a daddy. I said, now your daddy was a town drunk. I said, you ask anybody, I'm the only one that helps you, daddy. Everybody else, I do molly with them, they laughed at you, daddy. They did. I say, if your daddy's still alive, ask him, who treated him with respect? Imam Musa. I said, plus your son knows, because he's about 10 years old now, that's 10 years old. I said, he remembers, y'all lived across the street. He would see me talk to your daddy. Respect. I said, oh, so now here's what you do. I have a elixir. No, I don't give it to everybody. No clothes. And my elixir, Dr. Clarence's psycho-stimulating uh, elixir, it solves reverse Negro caucasoid psychosis. That's the have a Negro mind messed up with Caucasus and it don't fit, it drives you crazy. I said, I have a concoction, I told them the formula, I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna start administering it to you to reverse all of the post psycho cholesterol, you know cholesterol is bad for your heart, but it's also bad for your brain. All of these are diseases that niggas get when they mess with the wrong people. Yeah, see, <laughs> nigga called me talking about, I don't know what they said, I so I heard them talking. And they showed a the damn video. Y'all look at the video, it's a new video out. Did you see it? I haven't seen it. It's ridiculous! I'm laughing so hard. I didn't see it then, but that's what they was calling. I've got a new video. And I'm gonna show you, I said that, I hope it ain't like the last one where you took 10,000 hours and you paced together. I looked at this thing and it was so comical. What it is, is they're trying to help. The stuff that they put on, it convicts them. Hmm. So I expected that if they did that, that's what it is. I'm gonna really stop. All I can say is this, dear believers, Keep your sense of humor, keep your heart, but work to do good. Don't let the white man sell you that bullshit about uh, he's going to be around. 
It ain't it ain't gonna be like it ain't gonna be like that. Go read your history, read your Quran, read Bible, read Bhagavad Gita, read anything. Study. It ain't gonna happen like that. It's not happening like that. Inertia, things moving along. It's accelerating downhill. When the Titanic hit the iceberg and it start, it's too late to reverse. It's too big. It's too much coming in. And then when it tilts up straight down like this, that boy is gone. That's the way America is now. It's just like this. Now, when it start going down fast, first is sneaking, is sinking, and it's tilting. But then, whew, when it start heading straight down, the people gonna say the Titanic sunk in 15 minutes. It take 15 minutes. It took two, three days. It's been 70. It's been 50 years of the decline of America. Injustice, murder, wholesale murder, not black people and Indians, Vietnamese, Latinos, all over the world, slaughter, wholesale slaughter, unbelievable. So, thank y'all very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Are there any questions or comments? Are there any questions or comments? Okay, if there's no questions, uh, no comments, hopefully uh, we can get this yeah, done up as soon as possible. Yeah, I was, I'm gonna get you, I was going to get you the one from Thursday today, but my laptop's having issues with DVDs. It's okay though, I got a spare uh, computer at home that I can burn it on. Um, this one here, you know, I can meet back up with you around my group. I can get this one to you too today. But it just depends on, you know, how soon. No, too soon. Uh, the sooner the better. But I'm not going to go buy any, uh, I'm going to go buy DVDs tomorrow. Okay, okay. So anytime after that, all I'm doing now is writing, getting ready to go to California. And I may wait till Juma and then go. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'm gone. I'm not. Uh, Yes. I was going to read something uh, on the origin of unknown knowns. Right. Where it, it says uh, national security and intelligence professionals have long used an analysis call or analysis technique referred to as the Johari window. <laughs> the idea of unknown unknowns was created in 1955 by two American psychologists. Joseph Luft and Harrington uh, Ingham in their development of the Jahari window. They use it as a technique to help people better understand their relationship with themselves as well as others. And then it says, uh, and then there's some others, that NASA also used it. But it also says the terms known unknowns and unknown unknowns are often used in project management and strategic planning circles. Mm. So, well, it, to <laughs> me, it's bull crap. Now, <laughs> if you're talking about going out of space, here's what you said: in the movie The Martian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They asked him. Uh, he was doing a class when he got back. They said. That Think you was gonna die? He says, yes, I thought I was gonna die for a while. He says, you start solving problems one after another until you get back home and succeed. That's the way we are. All the answers, we don't need the answers. We know if we go out there and we keep solving the problems one after another. We're going to make it to our destination. Our destination is our destination, not their destination. Our mission is our mission.
lot of people's mission are like the Quran talks about them as cattle. They, they just, all the cow is worried about is grass. They don't look up and think, ah, hmm. I wonder why the sun moves over here and the clouds do this and that. The, the, the cow is not concerned. That's why the Quran said they eat as the cattle eat. All they worried about is the grass. As long as there's grass there, they're not, there's nothing else. Little grass, little water. When I was a kid, we had salt that got that. Y'all have salt lake in there. I guess y'all went from the country. <laughs> salt lake, the big old block of salt mm -hmm. that they put antibiotics and things. And all the cattle like that. They come and they lick when they lick. It's called a salt lake. All farms had salt lake. Mm -hmm. You know. So anyway. So us, we're not cattle forming around the salt lake and grass, but everybody else is. They're concerned about their penis and their behind and the food. They think about nothing else. They don't care about nothing. That's what the white man give them on the TV. Girls, boys, food, little rest, easy to buy a car, push this button, and your car will come out to you, they drive it out on a truck or something. <laughs> I saw a commercial, they had a vending machine for cars or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a little loud. Uh, if they can do what they want to do, I don't care. That's their business, right? But our mission is to develop utopia. Utopia only means a good place. I know one thing. If Allah, if Allah can put you in a good place on earth, right here, I don't know about other people. I'm in a good place. I know I'm in a good place. That's utopia. It's not paradise or perfect, but it's a good place. We just want to spread that on the surface. We are not messing up. They'll blow up the earth. And they won't feel bad about it, just blow it up. So thank y'all very much. Inshallah.